Hello and welcome to another episode of the season previews for 2024. In today's episode, it is the St. George Illawarra Dragons. So if you're new to this series and this channel, welcome. Um, make sure you subscribe, leave a like and follow for more content. Um, but what we'll be doing is going through like the changes in the squad to the ins and the outs, some question marks around the Dragons, some exciting things for Dragons and Dragons fans, and then probably the best 17 going into the year and where I think they'll finish up this season. So let's get straight into it. For the ins this year, they've brought in Corey Allen, Tom Eisenhuth, Kyle Flanagan, Jaime Sella, and Ronald Volkman. Look, it's certainly not terrible recruitment from the Dragons. It's like you're not looking at that going, wow, okay, that's going to change them from like bottom dwellers to top eight. But there's some potential there. Kyle Flanagan, like now they've brought in Ronald Volkman, um, who we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later. I think like his development into being a number nine is going to be accelerated by playing under his father. And I think it's like a, a great um, coup, to be honest. Jaime Salate was really good at the Rabbitohs, bringing him back to the Dragons, more uh, beef into the four-pack, which is good. Tom Eisenhuth, he can be a real leader in that squad. Corey Allen, there's certainly been potential there. Hopefully, Flanagan can unlock that. But Ronald Volkman is really, really excites me. Um, he's been good. In the limited chances he's had in the NRL there, he just kept getting pushed back and back and back at the Warriors. And I think like the opportunity is there for him at the Dragons to make a name for himself. Then the losses for the 2024 season, you've got Billy Burns, Jaden Hunt, Josh Kerr, Zane Musgrove, and Bud Sullivan. Honestly, I think the only real loss there in terms of quality is Bud Sullivan. He like had stacks of potential. He's had his like um, interruptions with injuries and stuff, and obviously he's moved on to the Tigers now. But I think overall, they've done pretty good business, and they've improved their squad at the Dragons. It's probably, on paper, it's still not a fantastic squad, but... I think they're certainly looking better for 2024 than they were in 2023. But probably the biggest coup that the Dragons got this year was Shane Flanagan. But there's a fair few question marks that I have sort of surrounding Shane Flanagan and the Dragons in um, 2024. So the first one I've got is how will Flanagan imprint himself on this team? Like what's the identity of the Dragons moving forward? How are they going to play? They're going to be a defensive based side. If they are, they're going to need to recruit some people or really, really work on the defense. But like what what is the, the identity of the dragon moving forward i think that obviously shane flanagan will have that in his mind and i can't wait to see what it is to be honest i think um something the dragon's sort of been crying out for for a little while because since that um 2010 premiership winning side like around that era where they were really gritty tough team they would just have like grind you down uh before they capitalized in um like that was their identity um like i had like the stellar back line that sort of thing it would just capitalize on the gritty four pack but since then, it hasn't been an identity at the Dragons, and that's what they're really lacking. And I think Flanagan would definitely bring that out. Another question I have is, what does the spine look like in 2024? Because they've brought in Volkman and Flanagan, who are primarily probably halfbacks. But you've got Ben Hunt there. And then there's a couple like things with like, the number nine. You've got Jacob Little. You've got um, also your Conor Malizan, Kyle Flanagan. Fullback as well. There's lots of question marks. You can play Corey Allen there. You've got... Tyrell Sloan there, of course. Zach Lomax has been rumored he's going to probably start the season there. So I want to see like what the um, the spine is for 2024. And whatever it is at round one, just stick with it for 10 to 12 consistent rounds of football. If it doesn't work by like first origin, then you can switch it up. That sort of thing. You just need time. Things like this need time. Shane Flanagan knows this. He's not going to go swapping and chopping and changing around. Hopefully the Dragons board afford him that luxury because that's what I, it's been a problem in the past with Dragons coaches and the Dragons board. But surely Shane Flanagan gets his way at this club. Like, I mean, he's a big name in rugby league. We'll see what happens. Um, but in the last question I have is, how and who will Shane Flanagan blood into this team in 2024? Because there's a stack of good juniors coming through. They might touch on a little bit later. Uh, but it's just sort of... I mean, Flanagan was really, really good at this um, when he was at the Sharks the first time. Brought the guys through like Jack Bird and Val Holmes and these kind of big names that we know. And he can identify talent really, really well. And I think like he's spoken about like guys like Dylan Egan, um, Hamish Shield and stuff maybe maybe making their debut this season, which would be like awesome for the Dragons because we really need to bolster our four pack. And the good thing about the crop of juniors we have coming through is a lot of them are forwards, so that's exciting news for Dragons fans. But it's just like when do you bring him in? Like you also got the two Couchman twins there that want to be like getting a bit more um, like game time and that sort of thing. So yeah, like there's a couple question marks around this squad. Like, do how how much do they really improve? To be honest, from like last year to this year, because most other clubs around the comp have improved. Obviously, I said before, Dragons their recruitment have slightly improved, but they still look to be a bottom dollar, don't they? However, the good thing for the Dragons fans 
is there actually some exciting things happening and some, some things to be excited about for 2024. So as I just mentioned, we've got extremely good crop of juniors coming through. Um, Savelio Tamale, I think, like he played under 19s last season on the wing. I think he's going to be a great outside back, like more of a center. You've also got a guy with the best name in rugby league coming through, Loco Pacifica Tonga. Um, massive, massive front row. I played Aussie schoolboys last season. Uh, he's certainly one to keep an eye on. Um, Hamish Stewart is a, like a lock in that Isaiah Yo type mold. Um, Dylan Egan, He's a second rower. He's not the biggest body, but geez, he works hard. And like he's more. Like, sort of, if I could compare him to a, like a current NRL player, be like Liam Martin. So big wraps there. Um, who else we got? There's heaps of them. Um, Hayden Buchanan, probably a couple of years off, another outside back. But yeah, there's like a stack. Or oh, um, there's a couple of St. George juniors like Nick Sarungus, probably one of the ones that's closer this year. Another like, second rower, really hard working type. Played in New South Wales 19s as well last year. But that's the thing. It's like there's so many good young players. I think there's a a Latu in there as well. Like there's um, a lot of good players that Shane Flanagan will identify and has had them in there the preseason as well, getting used to being around that NRL system with the boys and really starting that new culture coming through. So I'm really excited to see how they go if they get a run this season, but definitely in 2025. Um, another exciting thing that I didn't actually know until recently is that Shane Flanagan never actually missed a final series when he was coaching at the Sharks. The, they got a wooden spoon, but that was in between when he got his first uh, whoopsie um and it was banned so there you go Shane Flanagan's never missed a, like, a final series at the Sharks he's only ever coached at the Sharks so could the Dragons be smoky for the finals of 24 probably not um so other things like looking at the draw for the Dragons which like goes in their favor is the Dragons are the least travel out of any team in 2024 so hopefully that means that they can be back in Wollongong at their base as much as possible and work on these new systems and stuff and have to worry about like I mean, they start the season with a three-week trip up to Queensland, so they'll probably end up staying up there and really get a good sense of camaraderie amongst the boys. Um, but as well, looking forward, they only face uh, the Panthers and the Broncos once in 2024, and they're both off the back of Origin, so they'll probably be resting a lot of those guys. So if you get the two best teams in the comp back off Origin who rest all their stars and stuff, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, and there's the opportunity there that you might be able to pick up, pick up two points where a lot of other teams would miss out there. Now, we've spoken about some exciting things for the Dragons in 2024. Let's get on into chatting about their best 17 going into the next season. So, at fullback, I do have Zach Lomax there. I think he just is... This is a breakout year for Zach Lomax. I under Shane Flanagan, I think he's going to get the best out of him. Um, I think he just needs to get his hands around the ball a bit more, impact the game a lot more. Um, so, yeah, for me, Zach Lomax will be the fullback in like in a best 17 scenario. On the wings, one side, you have to have uh, Michaeli Ravalawa, obviously. He scored 21 tries last season in a pretty ordinary Dragons team. A very underrated winger. Um, on the other side, I've got a toss-up between uh, Tyrell Sloan and Corey Allen. I think, look, Tyrell Sloan's best position is probably fullback. If Lomax is there, maybe the best thing for Sloan would be to go back to reserve grade. I think he probably should have done that last season, but Cody Ramsey was, um, like, felt ill, so obviously... He couldn't play, so Tyrell Stone had to like debutise there at fullback. Um, but I think Corey Allen, he does have a lot of talent there. He's been at a few clubs now, maybe he can cement a spot at the Dragons. But when he was coming through, he was one of the most highly touted players getting around. Um, we'll move into the centres. One spot for me is definitely going to be Moses Sully. Just re-signed at the Dragons. Again, another one, one of those guys I think Flanagan can get the best footy out of. In the other centre... I do have Tamali, the bloke I just spoke about before. Um, or we could have Jack Bird there. My only worry with Jack Bird is he's just a bit slow now. He's had a few knee injuries and stuff. He's like beefed up, and I don't know how good he'll be in a centre position. I feel like if you're an opposition side and you see Jack Bird in the centre, you're probably going to target that. Um, I mean, you're going to target a young fella too, but I think he can definitely hold his own. And then my halves pairing, I do have Ronald Volkman in the six and then Ben Hunt in the seven. I think Ronald Volkman can learn a hell of a lot off Ben Hunt. Take some pressure off Ben Hunt as well to let him just play his natural game and do what he wants to do. Um, moving into the forward pack, my starting front rowers is Blake Laurie, who I think is super underrated, um, and Harme Sele. They sort of pick themselves, to be honest, in this. I've seen a lot of people put DeBellin at that starting front row spot, but I think Sele will be starting for sure. And then I've got Jacob Little starting at number nine. Is the obvious answer there, but you could have. I understand if for a bit more X factor, you could have him come off the bench. You could start Flanagan in nine, but either way, I'm pretty happy with that. Then the second row, I've got Jaden Sewer in one spot. I do have Jack Bird in the other spot, like if he's not playing in the centers. Um, and then my lock is going to be Jack DeBellin. Like, I think we'll probably play a bit more in all like, like the ball playing lock role is obviously coming more and more prominent, but 
there's still space for that um, like third front rower type mould. And Jack DeBellin can ball play as well. Like he, he actually, here's a bit of rugby league trivia for you. He played, started the game playing at halfback against the Broncos one year. So he obviously can ball play. Um, but yeah, as I said, like, and then moving onto the bench. So that 14 spot, like either Flanagan or Little, I'm happy either way. Then 15 and 16, I got the two Molo brothers for a bit of um, punch off the bench. Um, and then my 17 spot, this is the good thing about the Dragons this year. I've got like four or five names here. So I've got like both the Couchman brothers can get, a, get an opportunity here. Dylan Egan, um, Pacifica Tonga, and Tom Eisenhuth, like take your pick really. There is a fair amount of depth in the squad this year for the Dragons, which is something you haven't been able to say for a while. Um, and it's honestly, I don't, th- everyone's tipping Dragons for the spoon. I don't think they'll go as bad as that. But. In saying that, I'll move into my season prediction for them, where they will finish. I do still think they will finish in the bottom four. You have a look at some other teams getting around the comp. Like, yeah, okay, they might take a couple of scalps here and there, maybe the Dragons this year, but I still don't think they have enough quality in them just yet to challenge for a top eight spot. So I think it's one of those things that, look, there's change coming. Um, hopefully for the Dragons, it doesn't take too long, but like I think... 2025, 2026, that kind of, then we'll be starting to push for some finals. But for now, we just got to be patient and let Shane Flanagan do his thing and develop his players. And like, we'll just see how we go. Hopefully, try and enjoy the year as much as possible. But where do you think the Dragons will end up finishing this this season? Who do you think is their best signing? Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this video as well, make sure you, you drop a like, um, so sub to the channel. There's like a lot more content coming this way. So especially like, if you're not a Dragons fan, I will be. Uh, previewing your team at some stage so make sure you're around for that so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time